Future Mike here. Apparently my capture was off in many ways and it's gonna look really weird and I apologize for all of that. I'm still getting used to this new setup in general, so very sorry, but either way, all right. I'll be seeing you guys in the video. Thank you very much. Hey guys, it is Mike with Become the Knight. I am now on Subscribestar. I am very sorry it took me this long to get my funding alternative to Patreon ready. I had a lot of crazy stuff going on. I found out Subscribestar was back up and running literally as I was in the airport leaving for NAM. And when I got back from NAM, my computer broke. So it's been a little bit nuts, but got everything situated. The link to Subscribestar is in the link in the description. Guys, I cannot emphasize enough that doing these subscription services for my channel is of the utmost importance. I really can't keep doing what I do without it and moving from Patreon is a big risk. So if you guys can help out seriously, it does mean the world to me. Welcome back to another episode of Ask a Music Snob. This is the show where you guys follow me on Instagram and I post a little question sticker. You guys send me your questions and I answer them. Simple enough, let's get right into it. When you were interviewing John Petrucci, were you trying hard not to fangirl? Actually, no. Was I excited? through the roof. My biggest worry was to make sure that I wasn't wasting his time. He's an extremely busy man, he is an amazing musician, and everyone and their dog wants to get a piece of his time, so the fact that I could get some, I wanted to make sure that I was using it for the, for the best for both of us. So holding back from all the questions that I would love to ask him, and also just making sure that we're moving through the interview at a smooth pace, he actually took more time with me than he had to. Uh, I, was, I was supposed to get 15 minutes, and we wound up taking much longer than 15 minutes, and I'm extremely grateful. But yeah, that was really the biggest thing, is just making sure that I was using both of our time wisely. And I hope that I accomplished that. How was California? That was my first time in California. For those of you who missed it, I went to the NAM show in Anaheim, California, and it was amazing. Got to say hi to some of you guys. Thank you so much for coming up and introducing yourselves. NAM was insane. If my computer hadn't broken, I actually would have made an entire video about NAM, but I can try and encapsulate some of what happened while I was there. Two big takeaways for me from NAM. One, I'm not remotely as talented as I would like to be. Two, Holy crap, there is a lot to learn about the music industry. It's humbling for one, seeing all of these incredibly talented people who are in love with music in one place, but you get to meet so many different people from so many different walks of life who all share this love in common. It, it's like one big celebration of music. You see people in all different types of portions of the industry. It's really, really cool. The people that I met while I was in Orange County were some of the nicest people I have ever met. It actually reminded me a lot about when I moved, uh, first moved to Nashville. Oh, and the craft beer there is off the charts. I remember uh, I used to work at the brewery restaurant Rock Bottom here in Nashville, and they actually have a brewery inside the restaurant. Our head brewer actually came from Long Beach and he was telling me about all the craft beer in California. I was like, yeah, okay, whatever. You know, it's, it's probably pretty good. No, it's really good. It's damn good. I also got the opportunity to meet up with some fellow YouTubers and meet some of those guys. And uh, yeah, that was pretty awesome, I gotta say. It's nice actually being able to, I, I think I've mentioned this before, being able to talk with people who actually understand what you're going through and, and what your job is like, especially guys that are at that talent level. I got to hang out with Samurai Guitarist more. That was a lot of fun. Is there a song that you love by an artist artist you despise. Uh, yeah. I absolutely love the song Thunderstruck by ACDC. That intro is kick-ass, and I will even say I think the chorus is a complete letdown of this awesome tension and pounding driving force that was built up throughout the entire intro and then through the verse, and then you get some of the bum 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 in the pre-chorus. And then the the riff in the chorus and is no, just no. I wanted something much more anthemic and definitely, I don't know, less less fucking bluesy, mixolydian type shit. Like, come on, man. Either way, as much as I'm bitching about it, it's still a really good chorus in general, and it's a fantastic song. Do you think Patreon will ever recover from their mistake? I don't know. Um, and that's the thing is, I just. 
I don't want to have to deal with it anymore. There's every opportunity that they can try and make amends on this stuff, and they're never going to. I, I'm 90% sure that's not going to change. Yeah, like, I, just, I don't know. And I really don't care at this point. They've, they've already said enough to me. I found an alternative. Things are going to be really weird for all of us who have left that space for the next couple of months, and hopefully we can make it through. I cannot emphasize enough that I really could use your support on this, guys. This, this was a big risk that I took, and and some fans were really not happy about it. Other fans were very happy about it. So if you could, the help would be greatly appreciated. I'm the main writer of my band and I write too many depressing songs. Bandmates don't like it. Any advice? Why are you in a band with these guys? If you write too many depressing songs, I'm assuming they probably knew this ahead of time. So why did they agree to play with you? Either change the songs that you're writing or get a new band. Those are your choices. Is that advice? No. It's just presenting you the reality of the situation that lays before you, but at the same point, I don't know the fuck the situation is, so it's probably just in your best interest to face it on very clearly, not be like, I wish it was this way. Fuck that. It is this way. What choice? Go with your gut. Are all artists hopeless romantics? Uh, I think most of them, yeah. I think that's kind of a thing that makes an artist an artist is the fact that they are very emotional and very in touch with their emotions. And that's also one of the reasons why a lot of them have drug and alcohol uh, problems. There is a certain amount of neuroticism that comes with being an artist. And yeah, I think that goes with being a romantic as well. What's the most you've spent on alcohol in one night? $150. Am I proud of it? No. Do I regret it? Absolutely. How to make a living making rock music from India. It doesn't have a huge following for Western music. It's actually very interesting you ask this question. One of the people that I met uh, my first lunch at NAMM, was a guy who owns music stores in India, a guy who like, sells guitars and Western style instruments. I sent him an email, I hope he actually uh, responds to it, because it'd be really awesome to talk to him some more. He was telling me a little bit about that and how you know traditional uh, Indian music has a lot more, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A lot more marketability in India. And there is a burgeoning market for Western style music, and he's still getting in on the ground floor but I mean, it's still growing relatively slowly. And you're asking how to make a living doing it. Um, honestly, look at T-Series. Sorry, just get all these burps right now, geez Louise. T-Series is a fusion of Indian music and then Western style pop. What could you do that's in that vein? I really don't like Nirvana, but if you fused Nirvana type of music with traditional Indian music, that could actually be very interesting. And as long as you know how to market yourself, I mean, it could do great. But basically, here's the type of music that you wanna make, and that's great. Here's your audience that's at your disposal. You either need to find out how to bridge that gap, or you need to educate them, or you need to change completely or find a new audience. That's up to you, man. Do you see your channel getting bigger with the music snob content? I'm not sure specifically what you mean, but uh, this year I'm gonna be focusing a lot more on music stuff. I got to meet my boys from Universum while I was at NAMM, and I got this absolute beauty. Oh my lord. Her name is Sophia, and she plays like a dream. I'm hoping to have a video about her this week, but yeah. And I was calling it out on a Instagram live stream. I'm gonna call it out right here. I will have my album released by October of 2019. My team is almost assembled. I have my drummer, Ryan, just got a bass player on board who is very interested and who I have had my eye on for a couple of years now. And we have a guy who don't know if he's gonna be doing keys or guitar yet, but he's definitely gonna be helping with the writing process, and I am just so excited to have all of these guys involved. It's going to kick ass. I promise you. Opinion on The Last Jedi. <laughs> Honestly, I could make an entire video about this. Let's well, put it this way. Um, I didn't hate it, but I definitely did not love it. It was way the hell too preachy. Structure and pacing was awful. I know this has been said a billion times, but the entire Canto Bite casino thing, stupid and useless. I actually timed my going to the bathroom and getting more beer in the theater when I saw Finn and Rose on screen together. I shit you not, that was the first time I saw it. And I am saying it right now, Rose Tico is the absolute stupidest character ever made in Star Wars. I don't mean stupidest as in it was dumb that they made her, I mean stupidest as in as a character in Star Wars, she is the lowest intelligent quotient person. Yes, even lower than Jar Jar Binks. When they did the thing at the Canto Bite thing and they took the saddle off the dog horse thing and dropped it and she says now it's worth it, 
that's just dumb. I mean, literally verifiably stupid. Not just something that I'm like, oh, you're getting preachy. It's like, no, that's just literally dumb. And when she saves Finn's life at the end when they're about to have the giant mega cannon, and then she uses the, the phrase, we shouldn't be fighting the things we hate. We need to protect or save or something the things that we love. It's like, you're in the rebellion. The entire point of the organization that you voluntarily joined at risk of death is to fight the baddies, you fucking moron. Not only that, you literally risked everyone in the rebellion dying because you wanted to spare five more seconds of Finn's life. You fucking moron. It would have been poetic justice if she had died at the end of the movie. Dear Lord, the worst character in Star Wars ever. Which, by the way, is nothing against the actress. I think the actress did a great job with what she was given. This has nothing to do with her. This strictly has to do with the character as it was written in the story. Fucking awful. Where do you draw the line between hard rock and metal? All right, so if metal is like some ridiculous tech death shit on one side of the scale, and then hard rock is like Nickelback, this is our spectrum here. And somewhere on the spectrum, all of these bands kind of fit into these places. Where do you draw the line? It's really tough to call. I would say the closer it leans towards Nickelback, it's hard rock. The closer it leans towards tech death, it's metal. And that kind of comes down to when you get into those gray areas, kind of comes down to what you want to what you want to define it as yourself. I mean, just the definition of what qualifies as metal has evolved a lot over the years, especially since its inception. I mean, I would hesitate to call Black Sabbath a metal band, like their early stuff in the 70s. I would hesitate to call them a metal band by today's standards, even though they were the first metal band. What are your thoughts on vocalists cupping the mic? Do your sound man a favor. Don't do that shit. Thank you guys so much for watching. I do appreciate you. Please support me on Subscribestar. This is going to be huge as to keeping YouTube a viable job for me. You can also follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Become the Night. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you in the next video. Rock on!